Probably too slow for some people into a Google Doc that everybody should be able to get into. And I will go get that link while Paige talks. Perfect. All right. So you, you've probably noticed now you are in a webinar setting, so we can't see you, but you will be able to see us the whole time. If you have questions, there is a Q&A section. So when Jennifer, anyone pops a question up, I'll make sure it gets asked and, and hopefully we have answers as well. And then if you miss a part or you get kind of lost, there is a hand raising section. So if you raised your hand on it, I'll make sure to try to catch you and then we can help out from there as well. Otherwise, we should be able to just kind of follow along and enjoy. And then I'll pass it off to you. Cool, well, welcome. Um, I'm gonna be looking off to the side a lot because I have my notes over here reminding me what to do. But um, I'm Fira, introduce myself a little bit. I skate for the Breakneck Betty's. Um, I'm also a, an elementary music teacher. So most of my experience is teaching music to kids. Um, ukulele is not my primary instrument, but it's an instrument that I've been teaching for several years. I learned it so I could teach it to kids. And it's a really good first string instrument, especially for kids who ultimately want to learn guitar or people who want to work their way up to guitar. It obviously is a beautiful instrument in its own right, but it's a lot more ergonomic than the guitar. So for small hands or hands that are new to string instruments, it's less physically uncomfortable to play and it lets you build skills that you can transfer to other instruments, which is why it is great for kids to learn. So um, this note isn't relevant because you guys are automatically muted, but please type any questions that you have in the chat and I will try to get to as many of them as I can. Um, people are gonna come into this with various levels of prior string experience or experience with the ukulele. So I imagine that there will be parts that feel too fast for some people and parts that feel too slow for others, and that is fine and normal. If something that I am teaching um, feels overwhelming or too fast-paced or you need to practice the previous step, um, you can mute me and just practice what I already teach, taught you and skip the thing that I'm teaching you now, and I will type in the chat when we're moving on to something different so you can unmute to hear that next thing. If there are any parts that you need to just skip and spend more time on the previous step. So we're gonna jump right in with the structure of the ukulele and the basics of sound production on it. So how we hold the instrument is the back of it is gonna sit against your stomach or your lower chest. I'm gonna hold mine a little higher than normal just so you can see it and it points to the left. Um, my right hand comes across it going to hold kind of the, the body of the instrument here. My left hand reaches around and under the neck. So these fingers are going to be the ones that are pressing down on strings. To strum the instrument, there are a few different ways to do it. I use my thumb to strum, but my left hand is supporting the neck and my right hand thumb starts at the top and brushes down across all the strings. So try out some strums on your ukulele now. See if you can brush across all the strings without your thumb digging in very much or getting caught on any of them. Using your thumb to strum is one way to strum. Um, a lot of ukulele players also use their index fingernail and hold their hand as if they were holding a pick. So their thumb is steadying their finger and they brush it across, across the strings like that. Or you can brush all fingers across it. Those are different techniques that ukulele players use. I usually stick with my thumb, but most players don't. They use a variety of things for different sounds that they wanna get out of it. If I am ever hard to hear, by the way, please let me know in the chat and I will fix that problem. All right, so that's how you're strumming it. Um, there's a lot of numbers to keep track of when you're learning the ukulele. So first is how our strings are numbered. They're numbered from the floor to the ceiling. So here's string one, whoops. Here's string one. It's the one that's closest to the floor when you're holding your instrument in playing position. So holding it in playing position, try out your string one. And string two. String three. And string four. And we'll talk in a minute about what notes those strings play, but right now we're just finding them. 
the little metal bars underneath the strings are called frets and pressing the string down at a fret changes its sound. So to press down a string, I'm gonna use the very tip of my finger. So right near my fingernail, this part is soft where your fingerprint is and doesn't give you as much control, but the tippy tippy tip is gonna let you get a really good sound. So I'm gonna put it right on the fret and then slide to just behind the fret. So sliding up towards the head side of my ukulele. So try that right now on your first string, first fret, put your pointer finger, that's your first finger, right on that fret and do just a tiny slide toward the head so your finger is right behind the fret. Try out that note now. So just play your first string. Then slide it up a fret. Now you're still on the first string, second fret. Let's keep going with that. So each fret that you slide that finger up makes it a half step higher. It makes your pitch a little higher. I'm looking at the chat and I'm noticing that the link I just shared, I didn't share with everyone. So I'm going to fix that right now, pausing what we're doing to, how do we send, oh, all panelists and attendees. Thank you guys for your patience. Oh, Paige just shared it. Thanks Paige. All right, so that went to everybody. So usually we're gonna use a finger that matches the fret that we're at. So if we're playing on the first fret, we're gonna use our first finger which is our index. If you play piano, you'll know this is finger one, but on guitar and ukulele, this is finger one. So finger one, first fret. Let's stay on string one. Finger two for your second fret. You only use one at a time, so you get to take that one off. Whoops, I'm hitting the wrong string. Third fret. Fourth fret. All right, I'm going to give you a finger number, a string number, and a fret number, and I'm gonna see how we can get into that position and play it. I obviously don't know how quickly you do it, but let's try. We're gonna play string two at the first fret with our first finger. Let's try that. That's string two at the first fret with our first finger. Let's try string four at the second fret, remember to be right behind the fret with our second finger. Remember to use the tip of that finger. Let's try string two at the third fret with our third finger. So the string is two, the fret is three, the finger is three. We're gonna try a couple of those, but instead of just playing that string, we're gonna strum. So let's take our third finger. Let's put it on the first string at the third fret where we just had it. Make that finger nice and tall and curved so you're right on the tip of it. And we're gonna strum across all our strings four times. Ready, here we go. And to reiterate, that's finger three, fret three, string one. Find that, let's do four more strums. Ready, here we go. So that's how we get our sound out of the ukulele usually. Let's try one other one. Let's do finger two on string four, closest to the ceiling at fret two. So finger two, fret two, string four. Something that's important here is to keep those fingers really tall. If they start to flatten out, you're going to accidentally touch other strings gently, and those strings will be muted, which means they're not gonna make sound. So if you mute strings, like your fingers collapse, it sounds like this. When my fingers lightly touch strings, they don't vibrate and make sound. So curl that finger really tall, be right on the tip of it, not touching any other strings. We're on string four, fret two, finger two, let's do four strums. Ready, here we go. One, two. Let's do that again on string four, fret two. Ready, here we go. One, two, three, four. So now that you guys know a little bit about how to get sound out of it, we're gonna talk about how to get it in tune because you want your ukulele to be in tune so that it sounds good together. Um, the easiest way to do that is going to be with a tuner. Some of you might have tuners that look like this. 
some of you might have tuners that look like this. This is a clip-on tuner. So I'm going to show you two different ways to tune the ukulele and using tuners. Um, and if I'm using a method that doesn't apply to you, you can just wait through that one or just practice your strumming and then I'll show the other one. So first is how to use one of these to get your ukulele in tune. If you check out the document that Paige and I just shared with you, there should be a section that says tuning that tells you, as soon as I'm looking at it, what pitches the strings are tuned to. So that's the letter that your tuner should be showing when you play that string. So if you're looking under tuning, it says that string one should be an A. My tuner is beeping because it thinks that I'm making notes right now. But um, I'm gonna play string one, and I'm gonna see if my tuner says the letter A on it when I do. Let's see. Okay, it's showing an A in that corner, which means that it's tuned to the right pitch. And, do you see how the little wand on the screen goes right to the middle between those lights? That means that it's in tune, that I don't need to adjust it at all. So I'm gonna show you what I would need to do if it was out of tune. I'm gonna turn my tuning peg and put it out of tune a little bit. Turning these loosens or tightens the string, which changes the pitch. Oh, okay. So um, thank you for letting me know, Danger Moose. I will fix the link sharing and send that out to you guys again. That might be at the end of this, but I will discuss everything that's in there so you guys get to hear all of it all and then have the link to take with you. So I'll tell you the pitches for now. String one needs to be an A. I've just turned my tuning peg, so now it's out of tune. This is gonna tell me if it's too high or too low. If you have a tuner like this, when the wand points to the right of center, your note is too high and you need to loosen the string. So take one of your tuners for a second, figure out by playing and turning which way you need to tune, turn your tuner to make your sound higher and which way makes it lower. So experiment with that for a moment. Ooh, I'm finding that when I turn mine this way, it raises the pitch. And when I turn it that way, it lowers the pitch. So mess with that for a second. Now let's see if my first string is in tune. So it's telling me that it's an A, but the wand was pointing to the right and it was pointing towards this sign, which means that it's sharp, it means it's too high. So I have to make it lower. This information will also be in the document, so you don't have to remember all of this right now. So if you're using a tuner, try your first string right now. If it tells you that it's sharp, that it's too high, play while you turn like I'm doing until your tuner shows the wand right in the middle. See if mine's in tune yet. I'm gonna give you guys about 20 seconds to tune your first string that way. If it's not perfect by the end of that time, don't worry about it. You can always come back to it later. And let's try the second string. So string two should be the note E. So we're gonna see if mine says E when I play it. Yep, it's an E, but it's flat. This little B symbol is your flat symbol. If your wand is left of center, your note is flat. So I'm gonna play it while tightening my string with the tuning peg until it says it's in tune. All right, my E, my string two is in tune. Take a few seconds to tune your second string to an E if you have a tuner. If you do not have a tuner, the next method that I'm gonna show you is how you can tune it without one. Third string is a C. So take a moment to tune your C if you have a tuner. My C is flat, the wand is left of center, so I'm gonna turn my tuning peg while playing to tighten that string. So you're tuning again your third string to a C. Now let's tune our fourth string. Our fourth string should be tuned to a G. The fourth string is G. My G is in tune. Take a moment to tune your G. 
now, for those of us who don't have tuners, I'm going to take us to screen sharing and take you to a video that you can use to tune your instrument by ear. So it's going to play you each string. You're going to listen to it and tune your tuner until the sound of your string matches that string. So here we go over to screen sharing. Share. Hopefully everyone can see my screen now, but this thing is blocking the top, which I need. There we go. Okay. So it's gonna play us string one, which when you're holding it in playing position is closest to the floor, it should be an A. You're gonna listen to the A on this ukulele and turn your tuning peg while playing your string one until it matches. going to give us string two. Match your string two to that. Just a little more string two in case you need it. Here's string three. while you play until your sound matches. we are all either in tune or close. We're going to go on and look at something new. I'm going to take myself out of screen sharing. Stop share. And we're going to learn some chords because this is moving us towards being able to play a song. So a chord is when you change the pitch of one or more of your strings and then you strum across all of them to play some notes that sound good together. So we're going to learn the C chord, which is the simplest chord on ukulele, and you've actually already played it. So we're going to take finger three, very tip of that finger, put it on string one at the third fret. Remember that we're right behind that fret. So you can find that spot by putting your finger on the fret and taking a tiny slide up towards the head. Press that string down really solidly. Let's do four strums on C. Let's do my turn, your turn. So I'll play four and then you can play four echoing me. Ready? Here I go. Since that's a pretty simple chord, we're jumping right to another one finger chord that we actually also already played. Um, we call chords major when they have that kind of bright or calm or happy sound that the one that we just played had. Um, this is a C major chord, but when something is major, we often just call it by its letter name for short. So this is C major. The reverse of that is minor. A minor chord is a chord that usually in context sounds a little either like spooky or angry or sad. So here is our A minor chord. You're going to take finger two, string four, fret two. That's finger two, string four by the ceiling, second fret. I'm pressing it down without touching any other strings. I'm going to do four strums on our A minor chord and then you echo me on it. Ready? Here. I go. Let's 
So that's our A minor to reiterate. And our first one was our C major or just C for short. So of course, in most songs, you won't stay on just one chord. So we're gonna practice switching between them. Our pattern that we're gonna do is four C's, four rests, which is our silence that we'll use to move our hand and get set up, and then four A minors. So I'll play that for you. I'm gonna go back and forth between them several times. You can listen the first time to get the pattern and then try it out with me. I'm gonna use those rests for my time to switch between chords. Ready, C major, go. C. C, 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 move to A minor, here we go. A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, move to C, ready, go. C, 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 move, 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 move. A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, back to C, here we go. We're going to step that up a little by taking less time now to move between chords. So we're going to do two strums on C, two rests, so we're moving our hand a little quicker, and then two strums on A minor. So let's try that. You can listen first and then join in. C, two strums, here we go. C, C, move, move. A minor, A minor, move, move. C, C, move, move. A minor, A minor. challenge level is we're going to do four strums and then four strums on the other one with no rests in between. So you're going to see if you can just move your hand automatically. The thing that'll make this easier is if your fingers are already close to where they need to be. So you don't want to bunch up your whole hand and take out only the finger that you need because then it's a bigger move to get from one to the other. If your whole hand is kind of relaxed and already near the strings that you need to use, it's a smaller movement and it's easier to switch quickly. So four strums on C, Four strums on A minor, no rests in between. Let's try it. Ready? Here we go. C, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, C, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, C, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, C, 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 A minor. A minor, A minor. All right, we're zooming right along. We're gonna learn another chord. Um, if this is feeling easy for you, that's awesome. If it's not, that's also super normal. Uh, so if there are parts where you're like, oh, I don't have these chords yet, you'll be able to watch this later. You'll be able to look at the resource later. And I probably um, would not have learned it quite this fast. So more power to you if you do, but I just wanna give you all this information so that you can run with it later. So we have our C major chord or C for short. We have our A minor chord, and now we're going to learn our F major chord, or F for short. To do this, we keep our A minor finger in place. So I still have finger two on fret two of string four, but now I'm gonna add my index finger. Finger one is going to come to the second string at the first fret. So this is a two finger chord. I'm putting the others away so you can see it, but normally they'd be kind of hanging out. So here's my F major, or just F chord. Let's play. Play that chord a couple times, just by itself. I'm pointing my fingers nice and high so they don't bump into any other strings and mute them. F chord ready, here we go. F, F, F. Let's practice switching between that and A minor. So A minor is one finger, pointer off. F is two fingers, pointer on. We'll do four on A minor, four on F, back and forth. Ready, here we go. A minor, pointer on for F. Pointer off, pointer on. A minor, F major. A minor, F major. So that switch is fairly doable because this finger just stays put and this one comes on and off. One that's a little trickier but that you'll get with practice is switching between F and C. 
So to do this, I'm again gonna keep my hand open so that it doesn't have to move too far. The finger I need for C is already near where it needs to be. I've got finger three near fret three and string one, and then string four, fret two, string two, fret one. A lot of numbers to keep track of. I'm gonna play four Cs, four rests, four Fs, four rests. Same way we did with C, with C and A minor. So let's start on C and play that pattern. C, ready, here we go. C, rest, move, ready for F, F. Ready, back to C. it up. Let's cut it down to two strums and two rests. See how we do. Starting on C. Ready. Here we go. C. C. Rest. Rest. F. F. Move to C. 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 Rest. Rest. F. F. Rest. Rest. C. C. Rest. Rest. F. F. Rest. Rest. C. C. Rest. Rest. Try it with no rests. Four strums on C, four strums on F, no rests in between. Ready, here we go. C, 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 F, 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 C, 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 F, 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 C, 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 F, 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 C, 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 fingers a rest for a second. Um, my fingers are very heavily calloused because I've been playing a lot of guitar, but if yours are not, they might be starting to get sore. One way that you can refresh your fingertips when they're getting tired from playing is I gently squeeze the sides of it and get those dents out and just let it feel different for a second. So try that with your fingers if you need to. We're going to try out a three finger chord. Um, so a little bit more than what we've been doing. We're going to learn our G major or G chord, and there are two different ways to play it. So I'm gonna show you both of them and you can try them both out and choose the one that's more comfortable for your hand. So G, way number one, finger one, string three, fret two. So I'm on string three at the second fret. I'm not using my second finger because I'm gonna need it down here. String one, also at the second fret, okay? So I've got these first two fingers both at the second fret on string one and string three. Now finger three is going to fret three on string two. I'll say that again. Finger one is string three fret two. Finger two is string one fret two. Finger three is string two fret three. This is our G chord or G major chord. It always feels a little bit awkward the first time you do it, unless you um, have played similar things before. It's still sometimes awkward to me. Um, press those down with your fingers really tall so you're not muting any strings. And let's try four strums, four rests on the G. Ready, here we go. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, 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 rest. Strum, 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 strum. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. So that is way number one of playing that G. Here's way number two. I'm gonna take my second finger. Our fingers are gonna go in the same places. We're just gonna use different ones. Finger two on string three, fret two. Finger three on string one, fret two. And finger four, pinky, on string two, fret three. So same spots for my fingers. I'm just leaving my index out now and using these three instead. Finger two, string three, fret two. Finger three, string one, fret two. Finger four, string two, fret three. Okay. Let's try that one out. G chord, ready, here we go. G, 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 rest, 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 rest. 
G, 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 G. Rest, 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 rest. So shake that hand out for a second and pick whichever of those fingerings is more comfortable for you. We're gonna practice moving between G and our other chords. Um, this is the part where we're gonna be a little bit patient with ourselves because we're gonna go through the whole progression that we did with our other chords for G in each of the other three because that'll get us ready to learn another, to learn a song right after this. So pick either fingering for G. I'm gonna use the one with no index finger. And again, the locations for my fingers are string one fret two, string two fret three, string three fret two. We're gonna go back and forth between G and C to start. I'm gonna use my pinky for C this time just because of the fingering that I'm using for my G chord. Remember that C is string one, fret three. That's where we'll be moving to. Let's start on our G. We'll have four beats in between to get back to G. So four strums, four rests. Ready, G, here we go. G, 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 move to C. Here we go. C, 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 C. Back to G, stack those fingers. G, 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 G. Move to C, here we go. C, 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 C. Back to G, here we go. G, 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 G. Move to C, here we go. C, 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 C. Challenging ourselves, we're cutting it down to just two rests in between. If you wanna keep practicing with four rests in between, that's fine. If you're ready to try it with no rests and you want to challenge yourself, that's also fine. Let's start on G, two strums, two rests to get us to C. Ready, here we go. G, G, rest, rest, C, C. G, G, C, C. G, G, C, C. G, G. Try it with no rests if you feel ready. If you want to keep practicing with a couple rests in between, go for it. Four strums on G, four strums on C, no rests. Ready, here we go. G, 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 C, 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 G, 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 C, 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 G, 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 C, C, C. G, 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 C, 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 C. Shake it out, give that hand a rest for a second. Squeeze your fingers if you need to. Do some light wrist stretches if you need to. You never wanna press it very hard when you're doing this, but it can get tight. You can do just some gentle presses to get that tightness out. Let's move between G and A minor. So here's our G. And then a reminder that A minor, second fret, fourth string. There's A minor. Four strums on G, four rests, A minor. Ready, here we go. G, 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 move to A minor, just one finger, A minor. Back to G, three fingers. G, A minor. Let's cut it down to two strums, two rests. Find your G, stack your three fingers. I'm gonna do it with the other fingering now just for fun, just to show you guys again what that one looks like. So everything except my pinky in those locations. G, ready, here we go. G, G, rest, rest. A minor, rest. G, rest, A minor. Let's try with no rests. So four on G, four on A minor. Ready, here we go.
switching between G and F. So a reminder that our F is like our A minor plus one more finger. So I've got string four fret two, string two fret one. Let's go back and forth between G and F, four strums, four rests. Ready? Here we go. G, two, three, four, move to F, two fingers. Move to G, curve those fingers nice and tall. Move, 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 move. drums two rests. We're almost done practicing switching between chords and then we're going to learn a song. So I'm excited to try that out with you guys. Um, I wish I knew how people were doing because I can't see anybody. But hopefully people are following at least most of this. So let's do two strums on G, two rests to get to F. Ready? Four strums G. Two strums, sorry. One, two, rest, rest. One, two, rest. chord practice, four strums on G, four strums on F, no rests in between. Let's try it. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 I'm going to teach you guys a song that uses just the chords you've learned so far and has been playing each one at least four times in a row before you have to switch. So no super fast switches in this song. Um, if you're feeling like you do not want to learn a song yet and you want more time to practice on chords, what you can do is mute me and practice them and then come back at the end of this call for the time when I'm going to share some resources um, and tell you guys about some things that you can check out that will help you with learning ukulele. So um, I will post in the chat when I am done teaching the song so you can come back for resource sharing. So go ahead and mute me if you want to spend more time practicing chords or stay on if you're ready to learn a song. So we're going to learn Wagon Wheel because it fits with the chords that you guys already have and doesn't change between any of them too quickly. I'm going to copy and paste the chord progression for Wagon Wheel into the chat. So give me just a second here to pull that up for you. It's actually two patterns and it goes back and forth between them. So the first thing that happens in Wagon Wheel is we play this. And then we play this. We do that over and over again, and that's the whole song. So I'm going to give you these chords in eight strum chunks and let you echo me, and then we'll put it all together. So I'm looking at, how did I want to do this? Yes. So I'm going to play four C's and then four G's and try that after me. C and then four G's. Ready? C, here I go. C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. And your turn. And then I'm going to do four A minors and add my pointer finger to play four F's. So A minor, starting with that one finger. Ready, my turn going. Can you try that? And then the second pattern is almost the same, except instead of switching from A minor to F, we go right to F and we stay on F for four whole strums. So we play our C to G again, like this. C, 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 G. Try that. And then eight Fs. Try 
try that out. All right, I'm gonna play through all of those together in slow motion, just play the whole pattern and have you guys try it with me. I'm gonna also sing the song very slowly while I do. If you would rather just practice the progression on your own, you can mute me and I will let you know when we're done teaching the song so you can come back. But let's try that out. We're gonna go through that progression several times. The first time that we play it, I'm gonna sing the chord names so you know which chord we're on. Then after that, I'm gonna start singing the song. Uh, if you know it, go ahead and sing along. Um, and you can keep following along with the chords visually by reading them in the chat to know where we are in the pattern. Okay? So we're starting on C, we're doing four strums on each of our chords. Excuse me. All right. Slow this first time through. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ready? Here we go. C, 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 G, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, F, F, F. F, C, 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 G, Ooh, my mistake, G, 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 F, 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 back to, head it down south to the land of the pine. I'm strumming my way into North Carolina, staring up the road and praying that I see headlights. Made it down the coast in 17. version of Wagon Wheel. We're going to try it a little bit faster. Um, if you would like to practice chords or the chord progression instead, that's fine. Go ahead, but try it faster with me if you want to. We're going to do that much again. I'll sing the chords and then I'll sing first verse and chorus. C, ready, here we go. C, 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 G, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, F, 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 F. Summon my way 
how to use that chord progression in a song. I'm going to type in the chat that we're done with that for now so that if anybody muted us to practice, they can join back in. And I'm going to share some resources with you guys. Done with song. Going on to resources. All right. Um, first, give me 30 seconds to see if I can fix the link sharing on this document so that you guys can see it. So hang tight. Loading. Only. Yes, change to anyone with the link. Then get copy link. And then I'm going to put this link in the chat and please tell me if you can see it. Okay. Please try to open that Google Doc and let me know whether or not it works for you. Besides the stuff that's in there, I'm going to talk about some ideas for you. Danger Moose can get it. Great. Hopefully that goes for everybody. Beautiful. All right, so everything that I have shown you so far is in there. So you can refer back to it if you need to know what the chords we did were or anything about how to tune or anything else. So I'm going to teach you how to look at some resources for continuing to learn ukulele on your own. We're gonna look at chord charts first. So you might see some chord charts in the document that I shared with you. Chord charts or chord diagrams are a way of visually representing where your fingers go to play a chord. So if you're trying to learn some more chords outside the four that we already went over, you can search for chord charts for them. I'm gonna to go to screen sharing to show you how to do that. So let's see. Should be able to see my screen now. I'm adding a tab. And let's look for ukulele chord diagrams. No, I don't mean to Google ukulele. I know what a ukulele is, chord diagrams. Okay, so they look like this. When you're looking, come on buddy, when you're looking at a chord diagram, you're gonna imagine that you're holding your ukulele vertically. And this top line is the head of the ukulele. All the other horizontal lines are frets. So here's fret one, fret two, fret three. All the vertical lines represent strings. So if they're both facing towards me, string one, hopefully you guys can see my cursor, string two, string three, string four. So this is the first chord we learned. Here's our C major. The dot shows where your finger goes. It's right behind fret three on string one. They tend to draw the dots as centralized, which isn't really accurate. It really should be closer to the fret, but I guess that's how they stylize chord diagrams. So anytime you wanna learn a new chord or you're looking at a song and it lists what chords are in it and it says, like, oh, I need to learn a D chord, you could Google ukulele D chord diagram and it would show you where your fingers need to go to play that. So chord charts, very useful. You can look them up as needed. If there is a song you want to learn and you don't know what chords are in it, the website that I have found most useful for that is ultimateguitar.com. Um, while it's obviously geared towards guitarists and not ukulele players, it's the most um, comprehensive database of chords that I've found anywhere on the internet. So almost any song that's published, somebody has made chords for it on there. So I'm going to look up a song right now and see if we can find the chords. I usually just type the song title and chords and ultimate guitar and it gives me results that way. Though I know that there's a fancy way that you can search a specific website. I am uh, not very millennial in my tech knowledge. So um, we are looking for Sweet Baby James Chords Ultimate Guitar. Okay. Not images. And often it'll give you more than one result. And when it does, I look at the ratings. Um, we'll just go to this one, even though the rating's slightly lower because it's been reviewed by a lot of people and found to be fairly accurate. So when we go there, it lists chords above all the words and it tells you what chord you should be playing when you're singing that lyric. So we're going to play a C chord until we get to the word cowboy and then we'll switch to G. But when you're looking at this, see, it's already transposed. I'm going to put it back up here. When you originally go to this page, it looks like this. 
And there's lots of chords in here that you don't know. And if you don't want to learn a million new chords to play a new song, you can transpose it into a key where it's mostly chords that you know. So if you look down here at the screen at this bar where it says transpose, you can click either one of these buttons and every time you do the chords will change and you just keep going until you see mostly chords that you know. Ah, this is mostly chords that we know. And that makes it easier to learn a song. Then you can go ahead and look up the ones that you don't know. If you were playing guitar, there'd be another function here that's very handy, which is when you mouse over a chord, it shows you a chord diagram for it. Unfortunately, those are how you play it on the guitar and not on the ukulele. So if you try to play it like that on the ukulele, it will be wrong. Um, so look up the chord diagram somewhere else if it's a chord you don't know, or if you're playing guitar, this website's your best friend. Um, the other fun function on ultimateguitar.com is the auto scroll feature at the bottom. So if you are playing and singing and your hands are busy on the ukulele and you wanna see what lyrics come next, you can just set this to auto scroll before you start playing. You can make it faster by clicking the plus button on your keyboard or slower by clicking the minus button. And that's very useful as well. So when you transpose it to get chords that you know, it might end up making it very high or very low for your voice. And that is where your favorite ukulele accessory, the capo, comes in. I'm going to stop screen sharing and show you the capo. A capo is a clamp that goes on the neck of the ukulele that mutes all the strings on the head side of it, which makes the vibrating portion of the string shorter and transposes the sound of the whole ukulele up all together. So say I clip this onto my second fret. Here's how my C chord sounds without a capo, right? Now I'm gonna clip on my capo and it's like this portion of the strings don't exist anymore. They are muted. Only this side rings. So now it's like this is the head of my ukulele and I have a new fret three. One, two, three. My C chord now sounds higher, but also out of tune. This, the annoying thing about capos is sometimes they'll make your instrument a little out of tune and you'll need to retune after you put it on. But let's slide it along. When you retune with your capo on, ignore the letter names on your tuner. Just notice if it's sharp or flat, because if you try to think about the letter names until you know stuff about transposing, it's gonna uh, be confusing and annoying. Put it here, even higher. Every time you slide it further along the neck, it transposes your instrument a little bit higher. So if you do not already own a capo, I highly recommend getting one. You can use a guitar capo, but it can be a little frustrating because guitar capos are bigger and it hangs way off the edge of the neck and can get in the way of your hand. If you look for a capo that is billed as a ukulele capo or a banjo capo, they're the same thing. It's a smaller capo and it'll fit the neck of your instrument better and won't block your hand. So, Get a capo, it's your best friend. The last thing that I wanna share with you, um, which you'll see at the bottom of the document, are some artists that you can check out if you want to hear really authentic ukulele music and get some inspiration for learning the instrument. So these are three Hawaiian artists. Um, the one that a lot of you probably know is Israel Kamaka Vivo Ole. Um, he is well known for his cover of um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but he was also actually a really outspoken voice for Hawaiian sovereignty and for anti-colonialism and just um, an, an important musician for Hawaii. So he's got a beautiful voice and beautiful ukulele playing and important things to say. So if you haven't listened to much of his music, I recommend checking him out. Um, two contemporary artists who are making a lot of good music right now one is Jake Shimabukuro, who does a lot of cool stuff with music technology. So he uses loop pedals to layer his own playing. So he sounds like a whole orchestra of ukuleles and just this really like dense and interesting sound. And then another is Taimane Gardner, who was actually a student of Jake Shimabukuro's for a while. But she does a lot of exciting things with blending um, influences from multiple genres. So you'll hear her play flamenco, you'll hear her play classical music along with more traditional Hawaiian music. Um, so she's really fun to listen to. And I put links to the work of all three of those artists in the resource page if you want to check them out. So um, that is what I have to share with you today. That resource document is for you guys to keep and use as you like. And we have two minutes left, but Paige, is it okay if we end up going a little bit over if people have questions? Because I can take any questions in the chat now. Okay, cool. 
So if you have questions for me, go ahead and type them in the chat and I can answer some now. And I hope that people had fun and that they learned stuff and that the pacing was at least close to what you needed. When looking at music online, what is the difference between tabs and chords? That's a great question. So chords is when you are just strumming everything and it's telling you what shape you need to put with your fingers and then your left hand just stays put while you play that. Tab is a type of music notation where you can actually write out melodies. So it's different from standard notation where you'll see notes written on the staff. Instead of the notes positioning telling you what pitch it plays, it tells you exactly where your finger needs to go for it. So you might see, you'll see um, for ukulele tab, four lines. They do not represent the lines of the staff. They represent the strings of the ukulele. So if you see the number two on the second line when you're looking at tab, um, that tells you that you need to put your finger, you need to play um, string two at the second fret. And you're playing individual notes, you're playing a melody. So chords are for when you're strumming and tabs are for when you're playing a melody, which I do more on guitar and banjo and less on ukulele. But if you listen to um, Jake Shimabukuro in particular, you'll hear a lot of really melodic work on the ukulele that would be notated with tab. Um, let's see what other questions are in here. Hopefully that answer made sense. Um, I'll talk to you next week. I, I don't know. We can talk to you. You can ask Catherine. <laughs> oh, what was it? Sorry. Oh, can we do a part two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there might be something already scheduled for then. I don't know. But I'm glad that people had fun. So. I thought it was wonderful. It, it, it seemed great. You did amazing. Thank you so much for hosting this. Everybody. I'm glad that people enjoyed it and I hope you guys got something useful out of it. So have fun with your ukuleles. Wonderful. Thank uh, you so much. We'll all give you a little round of applause, but you won't be able to hear it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Any closing remarks for our, or a song you recommend us to all start working on next? Oh, <laughs> well, I, you could practice what you've already started learning, but also uh, like looking to those artists for inspiration. They played uh, the links that I shared with you is all of them playing stuff that I uh, definitely could not ever play, but um, it's, it inspires me as a musician and makes me want to work and learn. So maybe it'll do the same for you. But. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you all. Great all right. job, everyone. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Do you just end this call page? Yep. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yep. Thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you.